These days, they be putting OLED into everything. We have TVs, phones, and even monitors. But today, we're gonna be reviewing this ASUS ZenBook Pro Duo 15 OLED that is designed for the content creator. Not only does it have one OLED screen, it also has a baby IPS display, both of which are touchscreen and 4K. Let's see if this bad boy packs enough creative juice, get it, to help us do some serious creative work like 4K video editing, photo editing, 3D animation, and the whole nine yards. Let's get cracking. Full disclosure, this video is brought to you by Microsoft, but as usual, we do reserve our right to an unbiased opinion. We have been using Windows 10 Pro as an operating system for all our editing PCs at Mob House. Make sure that you use genuine Windows for the best stability and security for your desktop or laptop. Okay, so if you're a content creator like me, then you're probably used to having a powerful desktop PC as well as a multiple monitor setup at work. So working from home with a laptop with just one screen can feel somewhat limiting. Um, but there are a lot of specific things that make a good machine for content creators because we are a picky bunch. You need a powerful CPU, a powerful GPU, quite a lot of RAM, fast storage, and also a decently high resolution screen that is also color accurate. So Asus designed this ZenBook Pro Duo 15 OLED to be somewhat of a mobile content creating machine. It has a dual touchscreen setup with an i7 or i9 processor and a powerful GPU. All of this in a nifty little package of a 15 inch laptop. Let's take a closer look to see how it all stacks up. Firstly, let's take a look at the aesthetics. In terms of the chassis, the Zambo Pro Duo 15 OLED looks really sleek in an all-metal construction in what ASUS calls a celestial blue color. On the lid, you'll see a fingerprint-prone pattern of concentric circles with a shiny ASUS logo. What I find really clever is ASUS's ergo lift design that raises up the back of the laptop on a slight incline and tilts the secondary screen forward, thus improving the intake of cool air under the secondary screen and also the the main chassis of the laptop. Hot air is then expelled via the side vents. Now this is actually very important to help cool down the internals of a laptop this slim to minimize any compromise to performance. Overall, the build quality is really solid. In terms of dimensions, this laptop is 359.8mm long, 24.92mm wide, and 21.5mm thick. It weighs 2.34 kilograms, which is heavier than it looks, but nothing too crazy here considering the specs, build quality, and functionality. The main display is a glossy 15.6 inch touch capable 4K 60Hz OLED display in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio with a peak brightness of 440 nits. The color accuracy on this display is superb. ASUS states that it covers 100% of the DCI-P3 color gamut at Delta E less than 2, and it is also Pantone validated. Our test with our X-Rite i1 Display Pro calibrator uh, seems to agree with those claims. The second screen of what ASUS calls the ScreenPad Plus is IPS, not OLED, and has been upgraded over the previous generation. It is also touch capable and 4K, but half the size with a 32 by 9 aspect ratio and has a peak brightness of 400 nits. Also, it has an anti-glare coating to prevent reflections from the main display. But the anti-glare is by no means perfect. As you can see from the main cam, there's still quite a bit of glare on the left side of the display. The included stylus has 4096 levels of sensitivity and I find it pretty nice for writing, drawing or just interacting with the NLA when video editing. One thing you need to know about OLEDs is while they are fabulous, there are still some minor quirks that you have to deal with. And there are firstly, the black crush or grey banding and the potential for the very very deadly burn in. ASUS includes a piece of software called OLED Care as part of the My ASUS app, so make sure that you install this with the laptop. It turns on this very special screensaver when you leave the laptop unattended for more than 30 minutes. ASUS also offers a software that helps improve the usefulness of this ScreenPad Plus. For instance, it allows you to create custom dials for Photoshop or Premiere, which is quite useful. Although most of us will probably just use it to offload tools, view scopes when color grading, or park our timeline there when editing videos. 
Still, I find it immensely useful when plugging in an external monitor is simply not possible. Also, having that stylus and touch support does make it more interactive and responsive when working on creative projects. The keyboard is backlit with white LEDs, no RGB here, and has a standard layout with extra function keys above the touchpad for controlling the screen pad, switching between power modes, and also the power button. This dual screen design also pushes the keyboard all the way down to the bottom edge of the keyboard deck with a tiny touchpad on the right. While this makes perfect sense for desktop use, it is rather impractical if you intend to use this laptop on your laptop. On the desk, typing on this keyboard, especially with the included palm rest accessory, does feel pretty nice. Uh, but you'll need a decently spacious desk to fully utilize the whole setup. And while I find the location of the touchpad pretty okay, it is still on the small side, especially if you're someone who uses gestures. However, it doesn't bother me much because when using a laptop like this, I'll always use a mouse. But our main editor edits on a Wacom tablet, so he'll probably want to use this thing as well. Yeah. There is a 720p webcam, and here's a test of it, as well as the built-in microphone. You still the one I run to, the one that I belong to. You still the one I want for life. You still the one. This laptop doesn't come with a fingerprint reader, but it does pack IR cameras with support for Microsoft's Windows Hello facial recognition tech, which I find to be really convenient to use. All it takes is a glance. See? So advanced. In terms of audio, the speakers are, well, okay. Uh, it gets pretty loud, but the sound signature is quite meh. Uh, it lacks quite a bit in the bass and also treble department. The mids are okay clear and it should be fine for most types of casual content consumption. Next, we have the I.O. ports and on the left side, we have the DC in, HDMI 2.1 and microphone plus headphone combo jack. On the right side, you have two USB-C with Thunderbolt 3 and one USB-A 3.2 Gen 2 ports. Oddly enough, while Asus calls this a content creator's machine, it doesn't actually come with an SD card reader. There are two versions of the ZenBook Pro Duo 15 OLED. The i9 version is priced at 15,999 ringgit and comes with an i9 10980HK processor, a Windows 10 Pro, 32GB of RAM, 1TB of PCIe NVMe SSD, and the GeForce RTX 3070 for the GPU. The lower end i7 version is priced at 12,999 ringgit, and other than the processor, which is the i7 10870H, everything else is pretty much the same. What we have here today for the review is the i7 version, so do keep that in mind. In terms of battery life, the 92 watt per hour battery here gives us a decent battery runtime. Video playback at a decent 120 to 115 nits brightness will get you about 7 to 8 hours. If you really stress the machine, you'll get about 75 minutes. In terms of accessories, with this laptop, you get the power brick, which is a 240 watt AC adapter, the GV301 sleeve bag, which is pretty nice, and a laptop stand that helps prop up the laptop but can impede some airflow and is a little bit flimsy. I prefer to use the laptop without it or look at third-party options. And finally, in terms of warranty, you get two years of global warranty and the first year is actually the perfect warranty from ASUS. Before we start with the benchmarks, do take note that if you want to get the best performance out of your laptop, you need to leave it pretty much plugged in. We accidentally did some tests with the battery and were greeted with some underwhelming results, especially when it comes to the graphics. Moving on to the numbers. Synthetic benchmarks shows us the power of our i7-10870H. With 8 cores that can go up to 4.2GHz simultaneously, it is also capable of hitting 5GHz for just one core for single-threaded tasks as seen with the Cinebench R20 single-threaded test. The numbers seem oddly close to some of the laptops that we tested uh, that has the same generation i9 processor. In 3D Mark Fire Strike and Time Spy, graphics and overall scores are as expected for this i7 processor with the RTX 3070 combo. If you own the previous model with the RTX 2060, upgrading to this one is a no-brainer. You can expect a 30% to 50% jump in performance depending on the task. Next, we have gaming benchmarks, and to be honest, 
I was quite psyched about gaming on the fast OLED screen on this laptop. While some games are definitely playable in 4K, I wouldn't recommend it on a mobile RTX 3070. Also, gaming in 4K on a 15.6 inch screen is just way overkill. You would barely notice the difference dropping down to 1080p, but here you're gonna get a way smoother gaming experience thanks to that higher frame rate. Heck, even Cyberpunk 2077 is playable in 1080p Ultra, but of course without ray tracing on. Another interesting thing to note is that you can't really go up to 1440p, but you can still set your laptop uh, to 2560 by 1600 pixels, which should leave you with black bars on the sides, but make sure that you set your laptop's display resolution uh, to the same resolution before you change your in-game settings. In terms of professional workloads, this ZenBook Pro Duo 15 OLED performs really well in all of our Puget Bench and Blender tests. It is definitely a winner when it comes to content creating. Finally, looking at power consumption, temperature, and acoustics, in performance mode, the temperature does get pretty high, which causes the fans to get pretty loud, no doubt because of that much higher power draw compared to the balance mode. One thing to note though, thanks to that tilted secondary screen, the majority of the heat is concentrated to the back of the laptop, uh, the keyboard stays pretty cool and comfortable even after long hours of heavy loads. If you're not doing anything heavy with this laptop, I urge you to stick to the the balance mode. If you are, headphones are highly recommended. To recap, here are the pros, mass, and cons of this ASUS ZenBook Pro Duo 15 OLED. I give this ASUS ZenBook Pro Duo 15 OLED a very OLED's go create content. Hashtag chip buy 8 out of 10. To be honest, while I don't think this laptop is going to replace my powerful, very king chow desktop PC anytime soon, I can't help but find myself impressed uh, with how ASUS managed to create such a capable desktop replacement laptop in such a portable package with relatively good battery life. In fact, the next time I go to Computex or CES, this is probably the type of laptop I'll be rocking because I really trust the uh, color accurate screen here for color grading. And also the specs in this machine is pretty beast that I can edit 4K videos in this, especially thanks to that 32 gigabytes of RAM. And also this secondary screen does help scratch the edge a little from not having an external monitor. If you're a content creator looking for a solution that would allow you to work on the go, in a portable laptop with minimal compromise, then this could be it. That's all folks, if you thought this video is awesome, you know what to do. Huge thanks again to Microsoft for sponsoring this video so that we could check out this beast of a laptop and possibly walk out of this room later and buy one for our own use. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on content like this. And also, don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to see my face more. Finally, don't forget to leave a comment down below because I'm going to reply to your comments in our comment section, which is coming up next. And I'll see you after the comment section. For this week's video, we have the IQ video from us. And the first one comes from Elvin Ho. He says, nice. Yanni said he built Corsair workstation doing non-RGB all black setup. Is he still buying a Ferrari but driving at 30 km per hour? Confirm yes. Ade Bogali Sadere says that his IQ has gone up. Correct, that's the whole point of this video. Why OD says, why so little subs when the quality is so good? This one, I also don't know. Maybe you guys should go and subscribe to this video and share it to your mother, father, grandfather, grand uncle, and grand auntie. Then they can like it together and subscribe to our mock family. Now to the wonderful world of Facebook because my Facebook. What? Firstly, I'm gonna shout out to all our supporters first because they support us. Edward Pascal said you can display the Malaysian flag on the keyboard so you can support the Tokyo 2020 games. Also, this video probably came up before Madeka also. That's why. Show the flag. Show some patriotism. Patriotism. Wow, today my Chinese tongue not really agreeing with me. But I want to highlight another comments from Edward because he says he count 8 fans. Hello, you know how to count or not? You're Asian like me, right? There's 11 fans lah bro. 11 turn to 8. 
Huh? You discount, is it? Darren Lowe said, I don't really dare to play around with the light settings. Scared later screw up. You are kind of like my mother. Uh. Every day clicking on the mouse in Excel also scared the computer explode like, Hong ah, Hong ah, why did not I talk with that? That's all for the comment section today. If you're wondering why we're shooting outdoors today, because I'm feeling very outdoorsy. Also, I wanted to check out this phone's camera that we are shooting on. If you want to find out what this phone is, just go to our YouTube channel or Facebook and check out our newest review because it's our first phone review ever and i will see you when when uh, when in the next one ah!